I'm Edmund White. I'm a field product manager here at AvPoint. And I'm Dan Wilkins, product manager here at AvPoint. And today we're going to be talking to you about the AvPoint Privacy Impact Assessment, or APIA for short. So Dan, when we talk to privacy professionals, what kind of challenges are they bringing to us? So they're bringing three main challenges. The first is that they're responsible for a huge amount of risk in the organization, but they don't have the appropriate level of insight to actually make sure that they can do their jobs. Uh, what I mean by that, they don't have tools to assist them in actually completing the privacy impact assessments that they're called on to do. And a privacy impact assessment would help you understand the risk when you're actually rolling out a new system or a new process. More importantly, they don't have the stat to actually upkeep with the demand for these types of things. So when you combine all three, the lack of insight, the understaffing, and then the consequences, which can be millions of dollars in fines, data breaches, loss of reputation, these are the main challenges that they face. And we're talking beyond SharePoint here too. Their oh, scope yeah. goes across the entire organization, the entire Absolutely. enterprise. So we heard these challenges and uh, we partnered with IAPP to build Appia. Yeah. So what we actually built, so uh, we talked about it before, it's an automated privacy impact assessment system. What that means is you kick off projects, all the different questions and answers that you would typically do through paper or through Word or Excel is now comprised in one system with email notifications that go out to your end users, thus reducing the amount of time and effort that your individuals on your privacy team actually have to interact with anybody. The other hot part about this is that we give you a report at the very end. So everything that you've done as part of that privacy impact assessment will now be memorialized and then could be handed off to any other stakeholders within the organization. And in the demo, you're going to see much more about some of the little features that we've built into this thing to make this great for your privacy team. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to use the AppPoint Privacy Impact Assessment tool to run your privacy impact assessments. So in this case, we've already configured the AppPoint Privacy Impact Assessment tool with multiple logins. These correspond to the different users that are going to be filling out privacy impact assessments. So the first login will use the Chief Privacy Officer to showcase how you would set up your first privacy impact assessment. When I first log in, you'll see that we have multiple areas that we could enter. In the case of the question bank, this is where we fill in and digitize the questions that you'd typically be asking via email or Word or Excel. The question collections are going to let you assemble these into a completed privacy impact assessment. Let's focus on these first. You can see that the product comes pre-configured with several questions out of the box. These correspond to industry regulations that we've identified with experts when creating the privacy impact assessment tool. In the event that you already have a privacy impact assessment, you can begin by adding questions that you've created either using Excel or Word. So in this case, we want to categorize our questions, provide question text, such as. We can also add a description to educate people what possible answers might be expected from this question. Once we've given enough material so that the user can sufficiently answer the question asked, you can provide links to external policies or training topics that might educate the user further on what's expected of them. This is a great place to put links to system designs or past templates that you've used to secure information in information management systems so that users who are answering this question have plenty of material to provide the best possible answer. Once we have a link filled out, you can select the type of question. So this could be multiple choice, where you have multiple answers. So this could be list all users who have access to the system. It could simply be a yes, no answer. So in this case, I'm asking a very basic question. Once we have an answer, we want to be able to provide a risk score for whether we consider this answer good or bad. The higher the risk, the more attention we need to pay to what's being answered. So in this case, if no data is encrypted on the personal laptop, we want to provide additional attention to find out why that might be the case. So we're going to give a higher score to a no answer than to a yes. You can use a simple 1 to 5 rating system here. 
It's our recommendation that you allow for free answers to all the multiple choice questions that you provide. So in this case, we can provide comments from the answerer. This will give them additional insight into why their laptop might not be encrypted when they're providing an answer. Once you have your question built, you can preview what it would be like for a user to see this and evaluate how easy is it for them to provide the answer based on the information provided. So the assumption is that you've been able to provide plenty of questions that correspond to your existing privacy impact assessments. If you need more references, the IAPP website can provide plenty of references for how privacy impact assessments are currently being run across multiple industries. Now that we've built up our questions, let's take a look at the question collection. So this is where we build our privacy impact assessments. You can see that we provide several out of the box, more being added regularly by IAPP members. So we provide plenty of references that you can use as a starting point and add your own unique questions to your organization. You can find additional question packs on the IAPP website here. If you go in under the resources slash Appia of IAPP's website, you can see after the download links to Appia, sample packs that have been attributed by the community that can be downloaded and applied to Appia through this upload interface here. If you're looking to create your own privacy impact assessment from scratch, you can add a question collection here, which allows you to specify all of the questions needed to complete a privacy impact assessment for your organization. In my case, I want to ask my questions in parallel, which means that there's no particular order to how the questions need to be asked to the industry experts that we have inside of our organization. When we add groups, this lets us classify and group together questions that might best fit specific users inside my organization. So in this case, it could be IT security would have to answer this body of questions. And we can begin adding the preset questions that we had provided in the past. So if we were to pick a few sample here and add them in, we can now see that these are grouped together under IT security. And so these, when asked, are going to be asked of the IT security team. Once we have this, we can now save this and start an actual privacy impact assessment. The project manager is where you're going to be spending most of your time after you've done the initial setup. Inside the project manager, we have the ability to create a new privacy impact assessment. When we pick a question collection to use for our privacy impact assessment, you're typically going to want to use one that's pertaining to the type of data you're collecting. So in the case that we're doing a SharePoint portal evaluation, that might be exposed to external parties. In that case, we might be collecting data about UK citizens. So in this case, I will run a privacy impact assessment according to the UK regulations. When we provide a reviewer, this is going to give us the ability to have someone have signing authority for all of the questions that are being asked. This person's responsibility is to check the accuracy of the answers provided in the PIA and to provide an assessment that says, yes, this is factually correct. Once we've picked our reviewer, we need to pick who's going to be answering these questions. As we discussed before, different groups have different expertise inside of our organization. In one case, I might choose Dana as our responder. In another case, John might have more of the information. Now that we have all of our assignees chosen, we need to determine how often we need to run this privacy impact assessment. It's very common that these will be annual or semi-annual recertifications. In this case, we want to say, yes, we will recur this PIA. So we're going to start this off tomorrow, and we're going to restart this project annually. And maybe we will end it five years from now when we plan to retire the system. So in this case, we want to make sure that we come back to this automatically and proactively without having to manually start a PIA every year. We also need to evaluate the risk level. What this is going to do is provide a level to give me quick visibility into how a project is currently trending so responders can understand that they're providing what they consider risky values. 
and be able to see the feedback immediately. We also want to enable task alerts. These will be email alerts that will go out on behalf of the Appia system to all of the reviewers and responders who need to provide information. You can have this nag users on a daily basis until the questions are completed, or we can have this done uh, after the first or second reminder email. The project alert is used to notify the project manager when all answers are completed. Now that we have a project running, the project manager is still where we want to spend our time monitoring the progress of the questions and answers. The project monitor is going to give me an overview of all of the privacy impact assessments currently being run for all of our different systems and what their status is. If we were to look into it, we can also see additional details on who the questions are responsible for and where they are in the responses. So in the case that we have rejected responses and plenty of back and forth, you'll be able to see that including when they were last touched. So once the project has been started, users are going to receive an email notification telling them that they have questions to answer in Appia. If we were to log in now as one of those users, we're going to find that they can use their Active Directory credentials to see all of the questions that are assigned to them in a web-based interface. These are the same credentials that they'd be using to log into the corporate network. When they log into My Tasks, they will see all of the notices and questions that need their approval. In this case, I have system information that needs to be provided. You can see here that we have the ability to provide free text information as well as attachments. So if we needed to attach data flow diagrams or other evidence, we can provide that here. Once the questions are responded to, we can submit these for review. Once submitted for review, remember that Dana was going to be our signing authority and provide the final sign-off that all of these answers are correct. When she logs in, her tasks are going to show her not just questions she needs to answer, but also those she needs to review. You can see here that she has the ability to approve questions and answers, including any attachments uh, and evidence. In this case, she'll see the full log of who provided the answer and what information they, uh, they provided. She can either approve or reject the answer here. There might be additional back and forth for some questions. In this case, I've rejected one and sent it back to John to evaluate. And I indicated that we needed more details as part of the review. You can see a complete back and forth history, either as the reviewer or as the responder, for every question that was provided, their answers, and when the status changed. So we can understand how many decisions did it take to get to accepting this risk or to provide a remediation plan. Now that Dana's provided her final review, we're going to log in again and take a look at how the progress has been going. In the project manager, we're going to be able to take a look and see which evaluation has completed. So in this case, this is still in progress, but we do have a personal device policy that was completed. We'll take a look at the responses as well as what Dana provided as a review using the report manager. This is where we can build a report that can now be stored in a system of record to indicate that the privacy impact assessment was complete and signed off on. When we create this document, we're going to want to cr click on the project that was contributing the PIA. In this case, it was the personal device policy. And you can see, if this were annual, we would have multiple project instances that can generate a report. You can choose which questions you need to provide as an export. And you can also choose to include additional information, such as company logos or header or footer information. In my case, once you've completed the report, it's going to generate now a Word document that you can use to store on your own. In this case, I've provided some additional information about the system as well as the header and footer as part of the Privacy Impact Assessment program. All of the questions, including the answers, and who answered them, are provided for your reference here. In addition, we provide a signature block that now allows you to go out and receive digital signatures for who has approved the Privacy Impact Assessment. This is now ready for storing in your environment. If we've chosen to do an annual recertification, 
That same personal device policy is going to recur next year, and you'll be able to automatically trigger that, including the questions and responses, without any intervention. So the Privacy Impact Assessment Tool is really designed to help you automate your privacy impact assessments with little to no intervention on your behalf. This should require almost no resources to complete and will make your organization much safer. So we saw this need, right? And the beauty of automation is that you can get a lot done with not a lot of resources. Absolutely. Ha 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 ha!